Thank you for joining us at UINC. My name is Rhea Greif and I'm here with you today as I am every week to help build the most important brand in your life, which is you. And when we talk about building, we use tools and the same goals for building our brand. These wellness tools will help elevate your emotional intelligence and help to lead you in a more positive, successful direction in life and in business. Some of these tools you will find useful today and some you will pack into your briefcase for your new job. This week's tool is clarity and why clarity, although elusive, is achievable and critical for long-term success in business and how to gain this clarity is what we will do once I show you that this is a great tool for your brand. Clarity is your mind's natural state. When you learn to clear your mind, you begin to think like a winner, like many captains of industry, visionaries, performers, performance athletes, innovators, and inventors who profit from flow states that a clear mind brings. So why do we struggle with having clarity if it is our innate way of thinking? Well, we all have so much going on. A million different projects, to-do lists, financial worries, deadlines, commitments, domestic duties, childcare, multiple jobs, dual careers, and so on. Additionally, our mental clarity is also under attack from hyperlinks and smartphones and social media and video games and streaming services that are all consuming our precious attention and information overload is accelerating and getting more pervasive with no signs of slowing down. With all this buzzing around in our heads, it is often a nightmare trying to concentrate on one thing and our minds become over revved, weary and congested. This mental congestion results in time poverty, strained relationships, poor performance, unrealized potential and unsuccessful goal setting. What if someone could show you how to empty your mind of all the noise? If you could be shown how to declutter your mind and concentrate on one important thing, author Jamie Smart does just that in her book, Clarity, Clear Mind, Better Performance, Bigger Results, by challenging the misunderstandings we have about how life works. Rather than thinking, once I get the job, once I get the girl, the ideal weight, the house, the car, the kids, the workout regimen, write the book, learn the language, etc., I'll be happy, we need to free ourselves from this trap of flawed logic. Instead, our core states, such as security, confidence, peace, love, happiness, and success, come from gaining inner clarity, not exterior things. And through her use of mind experiments, learning to find your inner voice and trust this intuition, and recognizing that feelings aren't the result of circumstances, but the result of our perceptions and judgments, and that the world outside of us is being generated from inside of us. And lack of clarity isn't just a personal problem, but a corporate one too. The book, Clarity First, How Smart Leaders and Organizations Achieve Outstanding Performance by Karen Martin, teaches us that many businesses, if not the majority of them, operate in a miasma of overwork, poor strategy, lack of communication and transparency, ill-defined processes resulting in very frustrated employees. The cause of this comes from leaders not seeing reality and instead accepting superficial understanding. They jump to conclusions, they do not investigate further, they tolerate inefficiency and mediocrity, putting them at risk for survival. The remedies include Pursue clarity by seeking facts in the form of data and objective information, using those facts to inform your views and decisions. Observe the situation by regularly going to the place where the company value is created to see how the work is done, how customers respond, such as building site and construction, the sales floor and retail, factory production lines. Use visual management to surface problems and initiate open, blame-free efforts to solve them. Ask questions to learn the facts and ask questions to understand. Listen to what people tell you, even if it reveals an uncomfortable truth. And assess whether your team or organization have clarity about a situation before taking actions and making decisions. And finally, use mindfulness and clarity because it pauses us and it makes us confront our biases and assumptions to communicate with greater clarity. A chapter in this book also includes a guided mindfulness meditation exercise of just 10 minutes a day. The power of paying attention purposefully, non-judgmentally is a gift, and the wisdom gained from finding windows for reflection is a key factor in success. Mindfulness meditation is now widely taught 
in healthcare institutions for chronic pain, in schools to help children develop concentration skills and impulse control, by psychotherapists for helping people work through emotional challenges. Large corporations are starting to provide mindfulness meditation training to employees as a way of improving the work environment and encouraging creativity. Even the military is offering mindfulness training to soldiers to help them deal with the stress of overseas deployment. But you may have thought of meditation and wondered, why should I sit quietly? How much can this really impact me? Well, let me share what happens to you and what happens to your brain on clarity. From the book, Alter Traits, science reveals how meditation changes your mind, brain, and body by Daniel Goldman and Richard Davidson, tells us that meditation actually thickens key parts of the brain cortical thickness in the prefrontal cortex, which leads to muscle memory and body awareness, increased attention spans. It also lengthens the telomeres, which are the caps at the ends of your DNA strands that reflect how long you will live. You also breathe less because you're taking slow breaths to the tune of 800,000 less breaths a year. The extra breaths that non-meditators take are physiologically taxing and can exact a health toll as time goes on. Large drops in cortisol, the stress hormone, also appear in meditators, as well as reductions in cytokines that cause inflammations in the body. The very dynamics of the emotional circuitry in our brains, including the amygdala and the nucleus accumbens, are impacted by releasing us from being fixated or wanting rewards. It increases working memory and accesses the lower frequency brain waves to develop mastery of beta, alpha, theta, and delta brain waves for mastery of clarity. We cannot teach people anything. We can only help them discover it within themselves. And that is a quote by Galileo Galilei, astronomer, physicist, and mathematician, no doubt referring to his theory of heliocentrism, which placed the sun at the center of our solar system, not the earth, and he spent the rest of his life under house arrest. Today, we have with us on our show career expert who helps employees find their clarity, Shelly Stotzer, is the owner and managing director at Crossworks Career and Talent Strategist and maintains an impressive track record for helping individuals and organizations gain clarity and focus to perform their best work. Ms. Stotzer is recognized for visionary leadership and game-changing business solutions and providing the clarity that businesses need to grow market presence while establishing a culture that respects the contribution of each individual using the Berkman Method. She is an advisor for Rev1 Ventures, an organization dedicated to helping entrepreneurs build great companies, and Ms. Stotzer also has served on the board of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, the board of the Worthington Resource Pantry, and founded the Girls in the Run program at her daughter's school. When Ms. Stotter isn't cultivating lucidity, she can be found having more fun than most of us with her two daughters and loving husband traveling and having a ball. Welcome, Ms. Stotter. Thank you for having me. Okay, so um, the first thing that I want to say, and I didn't include this in your bio, is that you basically saved Highlights magazine. And I'm telling you, like I read, I read about you introduced apps and the clubs and the games and the puzzles and strategic partnerships. My kids love that. So for me and from my family, I just want to say thank you so much for doing that. Maybe one of these days I can get your autograph. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. It was a great experience. It was a super fun team to work with. Were you also inspired by the fact that your daughters were young at that age and you were you guys were consuming that publication? Absolutely. It was one of the advantages of working there at the time. I was able to consume not just the publication, the materials we created, but also all of the insight we gained from research and um, doing the State of the Kids and other events where we learned more about what was going on with children um, in the market, but not in the marketplace because we didn't actually sell to them, mm -hmm. but in the world, I should say. So how did you go about gaining that clarity as to what kids today wanted? Because obviously it needed an update. How did you go about that process? So our editorial team was fantastic at reading not just modern information, but putting it in the context of a broader scope of information because not everything is like, for example, the apps. Technology was really hot. We were very careful and slow and deliberate about how we introduced those products to make sure that they were good for kids at the time, mm. not just following a fast trend. So we did a lot of research, talking to all kinds of experts to understand what we should be doing for children. And so I like that, that approach because I think a lot of times people in their angst or in their desire to get there, get there quickly, 
don't take the time to really think about what they're doing and to stay faithful to what their brand is. And they may have some you know, short-term success, but they just don't, there's no longevity to that. That's exactly right. Right. Another thing you might recognize from Highlights for Children is they don't take adver outside advertising. That's right. And that was something that, you know, comes up regularly because that is a very fast way um, to increase revenue. But we deliberately said we're not going to do that because it does not reflect the brand that we want to um, have in the marketplace. I didn't even think of that, mm -hmm. and that's great because it's the last thing you want is to sell your child's mind to you know advertisers and marketers. And everyone has a job to do. It's not like we hate that whole machine, but certainly we want to guard our children against it. That's right. So it was very deliberate, thoughtful. I mean, we needed to be clear on what our brand represented mm -hmm. in order to stay true to those values. Did you help craft a mission statement, or did they already have one in place that you kind of updated? Their mission statement has been held true for a number of years. It was more. Uh, to figuring out how the marketing and how the extension of that brand fit into that mission. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. And it thinks again, I really, really do. I think it's fun. I mean, they actually fight with each other over who's going to do these various activities <laughs> all the time. And they're like yelling. I was like, maybe I should just get two subscriptions and get it over with. I love hearing that. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. Okay, so early in the program, we mentioned how those who are visionaries are those who have clarity. Mm -hmm. And in almost any description I found of you, from other business leaders and those that you worked with in the past described you as such. How did you develop this clarity in all these various roles that you took over over the years? Does, does this happen from your personal experience with the Berkman Method as a client of Crossworks, how that whole story started, which is a great story too, which is why you went back and acquired the company? Yes, so I've always had an inner compass. Um, I can't tell you how it was developed, but I can say I'm pretty independent and independence is one of my top five values. So I always found that I could uh, consume a lot of information and just know which direction to go. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until I hired Crossworks that I wrote it down on paper, but it really, when I went through the career assessment program and I put together a career map for myself, and I looked at my top five values, I looked at my top 10 skills, I looked at what I needed out of a work environment, and out of a boss, and I pulled all that together, it made sense looking backwards, but it was the first time it was ever on paper. Um, so following that, I made some career moves and then came back and bought the company. So you had, you already had that, but then to see it kind of put out there and then is that, did you utilize that even further to even further your ability to have those clarity, that clarity in those various roles? Absolutely. I have a dashboard that I used when I went on to work at IGS and when I chose to come back and buy the company. Um, I follow that dashboard and make sure that whatever choice I'm making is directionally more in line with what I see as my future mm -hmm. than less in line. Um, it's not always perfect, right? right. Like you kind of have to make movements oh, in the sure. right direction. And as long as you know what that direction is, you can make those choices to move in the right direction. So a good analogy for that is like a, a, an airplane pilot takes off from one place and they're going to land somewhere, but in the air they have to make course corrections in order to get there. That's so right. That's, you still know where you're going. You that's still know right. I'm going to Bangkok, but I just got to make some adjustments depending on the, the wind and whatever else is going on. And that's where the clarity comes in play. Because mm -hmm. if you don't know where you're going, you're going to end up somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, it, <laughs> you better as well... Planet. Right. <laughs> and so how many years after you took that assessment, and that's the Berkman method, yep. how many years after that did you go back to acquire the company, which is an amazing story? About four and a half years, five years. And you all, did you always have that on your mind that you were going to come back to do that? No, I didn't. I have to admit I did <laughs> okay. not. Um, I knew how much value I got from the process, mm -hmm. and I knew how it played out in my jobs thereafter, um, but it wasn't until Celia Crossley and I, who was the founder of Crossworks, reconnected and started talking about what my next move was going to be and when we talked about it at first I actually didn't think it was going to be the right thing for me because mm -hmm. um, it was a small organization and I was used to these large yeah. um, very public organizations and actually I went back to my career dashboard again wow. and said why am I not looking at this more carefully mm -hmm. and I looked and said what do I like to do and what are my values and how does this align and it actually led me to making the choice to purchase Crossworks. And was she thinking of you in terms of succession planning? Not originally. Okay. Um, she thought her daughter was going to step in. Oh wow. Um, and she made a different career choice for herself 
Um, she was a career coach, and she followed her own path as well. Interesting. What a great story. She's a yoga instructor now. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That's that, that's a great job. <laughs> okay, so um, one of the other things that we discussed earlier um, is how important it is for leaders to have clarity and to engage in behaviors like asking the right questions and listening, visiting the production people, assessing the clarity of their vision, and so forth. So you're currently in the class of 2019 for Leadership Ohio. Is that correct? Are you still in it? Yes. And it's a nonprofit for those who are listening who don't know that is creating connections in order to unify leaders who make Ohio a great state to live and work. Based on your experience as a student in this program and your expertise in this area with CrossWorks, does that lend to the leader's clarity to be connected with other leaders? Absolutely. Um, I think in order to be a good leader, you have to first understand yourself. And once you understand yourself, you understand what you like to do, what you don't like to do, what you're drawn to, and then you can appreciate other leaders and other leaders' perspectives. Mm -hmm. But I do believe it starts with yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and then surrounding yourself with leaders who might think differently or bring a different perspective or have a different number of years in an industry or whatever it is, I believe it makes you a stronger leader mm -hmm. once you have that clarity about yourself and you know what it is you're seeking to make you more well-rounded in your thought process. And so that's something that you were nominated for or because I think that's what the process is. Yes, I was nominated for that. And it's just starting in April, mm -hmm. so it is... Um, it will be a new experience for me. Nice, nice. Well, I'd love to hear your report back with that. <laughs> Innovate New Albany, you were interviewed about how you rose from contributor to C-suite executive at IGS Solar Energy, with the author of the article referring to you as a badass, that's a quote, I hope I can say that, if not, Greg will take care of that, um, but you say in that article, and I quote, Going from being an individual contributor to getting work done through others is, for me, the biggest transition I ever made in my career, regardless of industry, because it's a completely different skill set. So where did you find the clarity that this transition, for this transition that comes from, you, you did a corporate audit to financial analysis and now working your way through various roles over the years for those who are shy, maybe, who are, you know, like, I don't want to make the career change. What if I don't like it? What is something that you can share, like, how you can find that clarity and maybe some advice for those who are considering some of these things, these lateral moves or upward moves? Something you talked about in the introduction was how you have so much noise. Everything from your phone ringing, all your friends having opinions, so much access to information. So to, I believe that clarity starts by quieting some of that noise and sitting down and thinking about your past, thinking about what's important to you, thinking about where you want to be. Sometimes people shouldn't move into leadership roles. Not mm. everyone gains satisfaction through leading others. Right. Some people really gain satisfaction by having tangible evidence of success and results that they hands-on achieve. Mm -hmm. And so quieting some of that noise. Um, when I went to buy Crosswork, someone said to me, you're wasting your talent because being a coach is different. You can run a company. And I had ran big divisions and big companies. Um, but for me, that wasn't the measurement of success. For me, helping develop people, helping mentor people, having independence, having um, time with my family were all very important to me. In addition to building a business. I love building a business. I'm a little bit of a business geek. Mm -hmm. I love reading financials. I love building out marketing plans. I love doing it for my own company. Mm -hmm. But for me, it wasn't about that corporate ladder. Even though I was successful, that's not what drove me. Gotcha. So I go back to quiet the noise around you. Think about what's really important to you. And it's not necessarily what your parent thinks or your spouse thinks or your best friend even thinks about you. Yeah. Um, because we all have these personalities that people see parts and pieces of, and you kind of have to pull that inside and say, now, mm -hmm. what really do I like to do? What do I value? What do I want out of my environment? What do I want out of my life in order to make some of the decisions? And from there, you can decide if you want to be a leader. And if you do want to be a leader, what type of leader do you want to be? Mm. I didn't even think that to even drill it down even further, what kind of leader you want to be. But I think it's interesting that you mentioned, like, you, we have to each consider that everyone has a different measure of success. Mm -hmm. And I think most people have been told, perhaps, that it's about making money, making money, making money. And really, most people don't care that much about it. And, like, even the idea that maybe you don't want to be a leader, what's more important is to know that you're doing something good, that you're helping other people. Knowing that being able to spend time with my children is much more important 
important to me. And maybe some other people like to have, you know, I know nine to five, that's the only time I'm working and that's all I want to do. So it's different for everyone. And yes. you're right. And we need to not look at what other people's messages might be. And just really, like you said, quiet that noise and figure out what would be your measure of success and go for that. That's right. Yeah. And I once had a client um, who I was talking with while I was on vacation. And he said to me, it was an introductory call, so it was him learning about our services. And he said to me, why would I hire a career coach who is talking to me while she's on vacation? That's not very... <laughs> a work-life balance? Work -life, yeah, it's not work-life <laughs> balance. And I, I giggled a little bit and I said, well, work-life balance means different things to different people. I wanted to take this call. I knew what my schedule was going to be this day. I scheduled it because I wanted to, not because I had to. And for me, work-life balance includes a big degree of independence. Mm -hmm. I work a lot. I don't mind working a lot, but I want to do it on my terms. That's different than someone else who says my work-life balance means starting at 9, ending at 5, right. and not taking my work home with me. Right. Um, somebody else might say, I just don't want to work weekends or I don't want to travel a lot. It looks even work-life balance means something different. Yep. So understanding what that looks like to you having that clarity is important. That's a very good point because I'm like you. It's like, I don't care if I call someone on vacation because when I do things like that, it frees me up to be doing things like going on vacation. That's right. And uh, I had read something, and I'm, I'm not a big fan of using like generational names, but I had read something about the, the newer workforce actually prefers to have more of a blend like that so that they can have that flexibility and like work when they're doing social stuff and do social stuff while they're working. So, I mean, perhaps, like you said, there's a new way to think of work-life balance. Absolutely. That's right. Yep. Um, okay. Um, in a radio interview with a Business Innovators Network, you say about the work you do at CrossWorks, helping people find their clarity that, and again, it takes focus and deliberate effort to put society, our friends and family, our boss and coworkers aside for just a bit better to understand ourselves, which is what you just talked about. And then you continue to say, whether you're 18 years old or 68, CrossWorks lets people know it's okay and provide a safe place to explore unanswered questions. So, you know, we, I, we understand what we mean by that part because we just talked about it, but there's two other things that jumped out uh, at me about that. Um, and um, without being ageist, um, just the fact of where people are in their lives at these points, I was just curious, how can an 18 year old, for example, possibly have clarity you know, with like so many change and development in their lives and conversely, the folks who are 68, I'm imagining like likely retired, not everyone though, because I want to I want to work till the day I'm done. I mean, from this planet. Um, but how are those individuals, people who can still like look for clarity or have the capacity to or how it might be useful? Sure. So, yes, a 68 year old has more experience yeah. from which to reflect upon. Um, but your interests and your passions start a little bit earlier than that. You know, at 18, you've possibly played sports, you've possibly been involved in music. You are, I have two daughters. One, mm -hmm. her room's very messy. The other one's very clean. Mm -hmm. One likes an environment of organization and structure. The other one is more creative and free-spirited. Those things start way before 18. So we have a process that we talk them through that we give them a guided self-reflection tool so we don't have completely open-ended questions. Um, we have some tools that say, you know, if you could spend your time doing this or that, if you could um, give up money for independence, mm -hmm. we help them answer some of those questions. And we find that directionally, they don't change a lot. Hmm. Um, they just are reinforced usually by positive experiences in that space that you already gravitate toward naturally. So 18 year olds have plenty of innate, um, interests and experience from which to look back on. And one could even argue it's better to do it then than them having been told from the time you're younger to, no, you don't want to be a musician. No, you don't want to be an artist. No, you don't. You want to be a doctoral lawyer. So maybe it's very valuable for them to revisit some of those things before they got into the world with the messages and all that stuff. That's right. I have an experience with a client who was a lawyer because his dad said, you're going to be a lawyer. Yeah. And as we went through the process, it was one of the worst choices he could have made for mm -hmm. himself. He's very successful. Right. That Those things are not mutually exclusive. Um, but it's probably not the path he would have picked for himself if he had the time to reflect when he was 18. Right, right. And then what about the 68-year-old, let's say? Uh, the 68-year-old often has been very successful. They mm -hmm. put their head down mm -hmm. and they've done whatever society kept telling them was good. And they rise through the ranks often. Um, and they just reach a point where, as you mentioned earlier, it's not about the money anymore. Mm -hmm. And they want to pause and look at 
what they like to do, not what they have to do. And uh, they just have a lot more experience to reflect on, to, to clearly delineate. I liked this experience and I didn't like that experience. They just have more of them. Yeah. And people are living longer and the, they, those of us who take care of ourselves can have a really good quality of life from 68 to 80, let's oh, yes. say. So, I mean, there's, there's always time to do another career. It's never over. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And some of the work we do helps them decide what they're going to do in their career encore. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Career encore. I haven't heard that yet yeah. before. That's great. And, then, and that actually rings true. One of the... Um, one of the websites that I was looking at, I was like, when I was like trying to get the information about the meditation, um, was, uh, this individual, he was, um, he was, he was the editor for Esquire and then he decided to leave and he started meditation and this is all he does now. So yeah, it, it totally rings true. Yep. Okay. So Shelly, over the years, you've launched many new projects and by the looks of it, your main focus right now is on your business Crossworks. Yes. But knowing what I know now about you, I'm wondering what are some projects on the horizon that you are preparing to launch that maybe you want to share here today? And where can one find out about some of the work that you're currently doing at Crossworks? Sure. Um, first, what is on the horizon? We are really building out a couple different areas. One is our Career Encores product, where yeah. we're focused on helping people transition. A lot of people don't like the word retirement. Yes. Um, so it's kind of like, what's next? Yes. And so we're building out that as a product. It's built upon a lot of the other work that we've done. Um, it's just taking it in a little bit different direction. Um, I'm also very interested in creating more of an app where people can self-guide through some of this so I can reach a broader audience. Awesome. Um, our average price is anywhere between $500 and $3,000, and not everyone has that. Yeah. And so I want to be able to reach a broader audience by simplifying some of it and making some of it more um, self-directed. Um, and then the last thing we're doing is we're really trying to get out there and spread the word a little bit more. We feel that there is a great need and that a lot of people don't know that there are people like us out there yeah. who can help them. They don't, they have the answers. And you said that in one of your talking points, they have the answers mm -hmm. and we can just give them the tools to help them uncover them. Um, so one other comment is yeah. that we are building out our organizational services a lot too. We've done executive coaching, outplacement, and one of our favorite new products is helping organizations offer career mapping services to their team members. Ah. So there are people in the organization, throughout the organization, who are looking for a view on what's next for them. And the organization often doesn't have the time or the resources to focus on every one of them. So we bridge the gap and offer them the tools to uncover and to kind of more proactively manage their careers within their organization. Yeah. So that's kind of the stuff that we're working on I actively. Knew you're up to big stuff, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as our um, how to access more yeah. information about our services, it's probably best to go to our website, www.crossworks.com, and note that there's only one S in the middle. Thank so it's C-R-O-S-W-O-R-K-S.com. And uh, you'll find a lot more about each of the coaches and our services um, and tips and tools for managing your career and trying to find that clarity. Great. And, you know, the, the thing is that the average American spends the majority of their waking life at work. And this is so important that people really do make some of those right choices. Or if they're not in the right place, that they would feel, utilize some of these services so that they can feel good about their next move, right? And That's really right. have that clarity, like you said. Um, and then the other thing that you mentioned, because I do a lot of work with companies, I go into do wellness programming, and a lot of these companies do want to do professional development and hire within, yep. and it would be helpful, I'm absolutely sure, for them to be able to utilize this to help employees within the company identify where their next move could possibly be, because they do a lot of shifting anyway, and why not have them shift where they would do well? That's right. That's exactly right, and that's what we're finding is the organizations want the individuals to be successful and happy. The individuals want to be successful and happy. Right. And so how do we bridge that gap? Yep, perfect. Okay, um, last thing. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> one of your blog posts on Crossworks website gives advice to those who disagree with their boss, their manager, and their supervisors. And the advice given to create clarity for this endeavor is to put it in perspective that voicing your concern respectfully most likely will not lead to dire consequences like devotions or getting fired, to do your homework, to back up your assertions, accept the outcomes if you don't get what you want, and even perhaps maybe there's an alternative solution. So in all of your years in the various roles, in the various companies, in various echelons, and within the companies, what is a pro tip that you have for being successful in doing this and was there a time where you did not have that clarity and you spectacularly failed in some way? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, going back to my the Berkman, yeah. um, you'll find that I have a somewhat assertive and direct style. Um, and I have had to learn 
like many people do, that that works sometimes, yeah. and for other people, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And so you can have a natural style, and it is who you are, but being aware of what that style is and and this is the second part that's so important, respecting that not everybody has that same style or appreciates that style. Right. So you have to both appreciate yourself and say, yes, this is who I am, this is what I'm good at, and this is how I behave, and this is how I get things done, and respect that somebody else might have a different style. Right. So that's my biggest tip is, yep. first of all, be aware of who yes. you are and what you do. And once you have that respect that not everyone's like you. Uh, but sure, I have made more than my share of mistakes opening my mouth um, a little too directly when the person on the receiving end was not receptive or prepared for that. I could have handled it a little bit more delicately. Okay, well, good for you. And good for sharing that pro tip. You heard it here from Ms. Stouter. Thank you so much for coming on today. I know that everything that people have heard here today and the work that you're doing is going to be a very valuable service because people do need to be happy in, their, in what they do for work just as much as they do for their lives. Thank you, Ms. Stouter. Thank you for having me.